Ooh, big brown box today. Uh, actually got some freebies today. Uh, I want to thank uh, the folks at MPD Digital. I uh, was calling about some getting some coax cables, actually some rather obscure triax or triaxial coax cable to make some meter leads and uh, I guess they were doing some cleaning up and well one man's junk is another man's treasure so they sent it to me. <laughs> so these are the people that actually like I say, it's where I get all of my RF coax cables at MPD Digital. Um, go online, great folks. Been buying cables from them for a long time. Um, you know, U.S. company, woman-owned company. So I'll put that out there for them too. So I really, I think he said some transformers because this thing weighs like 36 pounds. I think he said there were some transformers and some other miscellaneous stuff. So I really don't know what's in here. So let's crack into it and. See what kind of goodies we got. Oh man, cables, wire. Oh, <laughs> Jesus, they must have really been doing some cleaning out. <laughs> what we got here? There's an 18 volt voltage regulator board out of. Hmm. Don't know. Have to look up the board number. Not sure if that's Textronic or. Can't say I have seen that board before. Actually, or is that a. Push pin? Hell, I've got some equipment. It's got, <laughs> it's got these same pins. I can't remember what the hell it is, though. But, yeah, heck, there's a good, if nothing else, just a standalone supply. I have to, like I say, look that up, see what the required input voltage is into this. But, gee, there's a nice little, uh, and actually, it probably wouldn't be hard to modify this for voltages other than 18 volts. Um, actually, this is negative, 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 negative. It looks like it's probably, it's horizontal, vertical, horizontal, vertical. So, this is probably for a scoop. But, uh, yeah, it probably wouldn't be hard to repurpose this. Um, you know, for, uh, you know, knock the voltage down on it. Just be a matter of redoing the regulator circuit on it to knock it down to like 13.8, 14 volts or something like that. Uh, let's see. Heat gun nozzle kit. Never out of the pack. I actually have, like, I got a heat gun they'll fit onto, so that's cool. Can you use that? Caution, always connect to positive first. Little IDs. Ah, double bananas. Never have enough of these. My God, I go through these things by the dozens <laughs> sometimes. I mean, every every test lead, I'm well, not not even, te not really test leads, just all of my power cables for connecting to radios. Because when you work on ham radios, CB radios, uh, stereos, you work on all kinds of stuff. You end up just needing all kinds of coax cables. So all of my cables... All of my power cables, I make up dedicated bench cords and then put the double banana jacks on them. So, yeah, I can always use those. That's a big bonus. Well, there's some nice old SMA hard cables. Came out of some kind of test instrument. They're nice to have because you can rebend those as long as they're long enough. A lot of you know, I've reused a lot of times when I gut instruments. I always keep the hard cables because a lot of times I can reuse them in something else. I'm not sure I'm really going to have much of a use for a tiny chunk of cable that long, but what do we got here? Five pin DIN extension cable. Always make use of that. There's a XLR plug, standard three pin XLR, and this is a phase reverser. Okay. There's some nice looking. 15 feet. Yeah, that was made specifically for something. I'm not going to find any markings on the cable. It's like it's solid center conductor. Just looking at the cable there, it's not stranded. It's actually fairly flexible. I mean, it's you can see it's rigid, so it holds its you know it holds its shape. But by the same token, it's actually fairly flexible, so that's a really pure copper core 
definitely no steel mixed in with that stuff. So, yeah, I've got an SMA on one end. I can actually, what I'll probably do is, is because I do use SMAs, I'll probably stick it. I'll have to figure out exactly what cable this is, but now I can stick like a BNC on the other end or an SMA. But I, I probably have BNC cables that'll fit that. Phone plugs never have enough of those. Oh my god, work on old tube radios. That's the standard for speaker jacks on the old tube radios. There's an old uh, 12.6. I actually got a bunch of these exact ones in the package. I cleaned up when one of the local Radio Shack stores closed their doors. But uh, a little 12.6 volt, 300 milliamp uh, transformers. They're good for making little small power supplies. Uh, huh, more double bananas. Yellow. Uh, insulated wrapping wire. Huh. It looks like they cleaned out a Radio Shack too. <laughs> Well, this is military. Uh, in, in case you're not familiar with the military, I was in the military. Dino, if you're watching this, I know you know what this is. But uh, it's easy to tell if something's military, this numbering system here. So you'll have four digits, a dash, usually either a zero, zero, or a zero, one, then a dash, three digits, a dash, and then four, four digits. But yeah, obviously, mill surplus of something. And MPD Digital does... Um, does deal with a lot of military uh, spec coax cables and whatnot. Let's actually see what the heck's in here. Oh, it looks like a. Is that a pace? Holy shit, it is. Oh, huh. they must have been watching my videos and they know I use pace equipment. <laughs> I just have to figure out which one this is for. I have to look the number up on here, but yeah, hell, because I have pretty much everything Pace has ever made from the really old equipment to the new, so yeah, hell. Well, actually, this is 120 volt. So actually, I will probably be getting rid of this. Um, buddy, if you're watching, I'm probably going to send this to you. I need to cross-reference it, but that Pace desoldering machine that I gave you, um, this, I believe, is the replacement heater for that, so I don't use those old machines anymore, so, yeah, I'll cross-reference that over, but if it is, this will be headed your way. <laughs> Get that back in the baggie. Uh, some kind of crimp furls, maybe? Ball, double... Shank stainless steel for 16th inch cable. Oh, okay, they're just balls for on 16th inch cable. Got me. Maybe little stops for a you know cable to something like that. The double RCA to single RCA adapter cable. Another transformer. Proto boards. Yeah, they definitely add to. Cleaned up at the Radio Shack, that's for sure. Well, this one's not a Radio Shack. Actually, the bag's still sealed. 12 volts. Okay, that's a 12 volt transformer. Uh, that looks latch assembly or a hinge. Catch, yep, so it's a latch. There's a catch for some type of military equipment. Of course, you can always reuse stuff like that on other things. Aha! Man, I even included some tape here. See, this is rubber splicing tape. I actually use this. I have some here. It's great for when you're doing antennas, uh, outdoor work. Once you've made your coax connections, you know, you take your coax cable, of course, it would have an end on it. But once you attach that to your antenna, let's say, or whatever, a ballon, uh, you want to waterproof that connector. This is the stuff to use here. And this is actually the same brand, same exact thing that I use. So, um, some of the stuff that I have is like two inches wide because you can get get the uh, the rubber splicing tape but it's what I call a fusion tape uh, so actually let's just crack that open and I'll show you what I mean it actually sticks to itself and it will form so we'll cut off a little piece here I do use a lot of this stuff so no harm in opening it up it will get used and you peel off this little backing and then what you do is just stretch it out. And what you would do is, is wrap that around. 
your coax connection, whatever connection you have, but it makes a very waterproof connection. And you come back, you know, half hour, hour later, that'll be one solid mass of rubber. It actually sticks to itself. It actually ends up bonding to itself. And you can see it's already, it's starting to do that. But yeah, great stuff. So yeah, if, if you do antenna installations, um, always pays to have a roll of this around. Like I said, I go through a lot of this stuff. So hey, here's great. There's one roll I don't have to buy. Get my pig sticker put away. Vinyl mastic pads. So again, kind of the same principle, except these are a mastic. But you know, use these the same same way. Two layers of you know material there, but it's got the mastic on the inside for insulating, waterproofing. You know, exterior connections. I do use those. Not as often as I use the tape, but those are handy for really oddball shapes where you can't wrap something around it. Got another roll. Ah, tin copper braid. <laughs> now hold on, here, turn around here. Yep, that's the exact same thing I use. <laughs> Here's a roll that I actually use. <laughs> Um, so another tape that I use, now it's not a sticky tape, I mean, it's actually not tape, if you want to call it that, get the pin out of it. Oh, and I just dropped the pin in the box. Yeah, I'll jab myself with that in a minute. But it's a, it's a mesh, so it's copper wire, it's been tinned, but it's actually a tube, okay? So for shield, you can put this, you know, put something inside of this. Uh, what I use this for is if I need to do uh, shielding braids or something, that jumper across from a board to a chassis or something like that, but I want to leave it flexible, I can do this. I can kind of ball this up, tack it down on one end, tack it down on the other end, and there's your flex, you know, kind of acts like a flex joint. It has lots lots of uses. It's great. You can wrap this around cables. Uh, you know, it has lots of uses. It's very universal. Good stuff. Not cheap, but it's great stuff. That would appear to be another heating element for another paste desoldering iron. Another phone jack. Some more wire wrapping wire. Ooh, nice little thin, very rigid coax cable. Is that solid? No, no, that's coax. A Teflon jacket. Not the Again, and a lot of times what you can do if you end up with military surplus stuff, uh, if the cable's not marked, which actually I see this is, so actually I can probably get the number off of it. I can get to a point on the spool where it's actually showing. There it is. And no, that's not going to do any good because that's the same mil spec part number on there that's on the reel. So yeah, I'll have to cross-reference that. But a lot of times if it's a normal... Uh, you know, it doesn't have to be necessarily coax cable. Anything military surplus. Um, Google is your friend. So there are lots of companies that sell military surplus. And then there's other companies that's basically all they handle is data. And actually the DOD has a, a reference database. But you can just go on Google, type in, because here's that same part number. So, you know, you can have four digits that's just missing the dashes, but it'll be 6145 01 331 9787. What you can do is is go online, type in that NSN or national stock number, and you can pull up the uh, the sheet for this. So you can see who made this. Uh, military is very good when it was made, you know, size, what it is, whatnot. But you can look this up, and a lot of times you'll find in that listing the the actual civilian number that's used. Um, or it'll give you a number to the manufacturers, and then you can a lot of times go to the manufacturer's website and cross that number over to find out what the, basically the civilian equivalent is. Now this looks like RG400, which I do use. Yeah, that definitely looks like 400. Uh, I'm trying to see here. Spelled in, yeah, it does not have a RG number on it. I could look up that belled in number that's on there, but I just know I use actually. <laughs> matter of fact, if I help swing the camera up here, there's a piece of RG 400 right there. It's exactly the same. It's a really good, high quality, double shielded uh, Teflon uh, cable. So, 
really high quality stuff. And a lot of times when I'm using this, that's all I need. Like I made, like the one I made up there, the little jumper that goes over to my attenuator box, I only need a short piece. So yeah, even little scraps of that are always worth hanging on to. And there's some PC terminal blocks, never have enough of them. Those are, uh, they look like ball connectors. Yeah, I think that's what those probably are. Now, without even turning this over, I'm going to guess uh, B and K. Fluke. No, I was wrong. <laughs> ah, I should have known that. Yeah, Fluke. The feet. I should have given it away. B and K also had some equipment this color. Yeah, here's an old Fluke. Okay, where in the heck is the model number? Huh. 8058 digital multimeter. Well, I'll have to see if that old guy works. Again, military. <laughs> that was military surplus. Yeah, the military number for this is a ANUSM 486 slash U. Multimeter, comma, digital. Yes, and the military is great. Oh, my God. You look at the nomenclatures for some stuff. It'll be something, comma, something, comma, something, comma, something, comma, something. And it's completely backwards from the way a, a civilian would say it. Yeah, in the military, we have to hyphenate everything. <laughs> okay. Bubble wrap and get rid of that. Hmm. There's a big honking box down there. What the hell that is? Oh, man. I see big toggle switches. They got my interest up now. Uh, is that a... Oh, wire wrap tool. I was going to say a screwdriver, but actually it's a wire wrap tool. <laughs> Fork use with the wire wrap that they sent me. And yeah, I'll break out harness out of something. Another one of those latches. Some more Temflex tape. Again, never have too much of that stuff. <laughs> Prior... Wow, those are old. Oh, actually not too old. 2013. Yeah, old priority mail stickers. I've got a roll, roll of them. I've got the tape. If you know your uh, postal service people, you can actually get that. There's some there's hard or flex. Yeah, I don't know if I'd call those rigid cables or not. They're, yeah, they are. Actually, they're coax. So they're actually a little bit more flexible than your standard ones that are actually a metal tube. This is like a braid, but it's almost like it's solid, too. It's almost like it's just got indentations in it. But again, some more nice little SMA jumpers. They're always great for making up little test fixtures and shit like this, man. It's, it's, these cables can get ungodly expensive if you ever have to buy stuff like that. Cable assembly. Again, mill surplus. Huh. It's just looks like a header socket with open ends on the other end. Okay. Huh. Nothing else. Is that, uh, I'll just rip it open there and see if it's Teflon wire. If nothing else, that's a... Yep. Teflon. Most, most any time you find wire in the military, it's almost always going to be Teflon. So, yeah, I'll have absolutely probably, I say that, and I'll probably look at it in something I can use. But normally, oh, that goes to a dip package. Oh, actually, as I said, I, I'll probably end up, yeah, so actually I might leave this. That's perfect. Yeah, because that's, so what you would do is it's just the same dip package like you have for, you know, I'll just grab an old used IC out of something I just worked on. So something like this. You know, it's the same uses actually be actually like this one. You can see it has the same pin pitch. But yeah, so you can just plug that into a board, solder it in, and then there's your wiring harness. But uh, yeah, actually, I think I'll just leave the wires on there. But yeah, that's another thing. That military, like I say, almost everything you ever find in the military is going to be Teflon wire. It's a grand Teflon wire. is really, really expensive. So it's actually a good place to find stuff, you know, chunks. Because usually when I need a piece of Teflon wire, I only need a short piece. Mm, more terminal blocks. Yeah, they just outdid themselves sending me goodies. Some standoffs. Oh, are they rubber? Oh, okay, they're plastic. I think I, I actually don't think I. I mean, I've got thousands and thousands of standoffs too, but you know, they're quarter-inch board standoffs. They're plastic, but with a brass insert, so they're insulating. <laughs> okay, and it looks like the major weight in this box is whatever the hell this is. And I see some huge ass positive and negative terminals on the back of this thing. It says 24 volts. Ah. Get everything. Get this box out the way. Oh, what the 
heck do we have here? So 24 volts in, I'm assuming. These are all your outputs. That's the back side of it. Oh, oh something I'm familiar with. Ah, that came out while I was in the service. I was a radio operator. Singars. It was a secure FM frequency hopping radio system. And when it first came out, it was an absolute nightmare. <laughs> But, of course, the military, everything the military uses is 24 volt. Um, so, actually, I wonder if this is just a distribution panel. An extremely high current, so 30, 60, 70, 100, 20, 30. So, 130 amps if all of these were turned on. And there's a, I don't know if that's a main breaker. And then the out, you know, then just the outputs. Stud terminals. Actually, let me uh, crack that open. That would actually be great. Big monster. Oh. Do this the fast way. I ain't gonna do this with a screwdriver. Will be. You kidding me? Yeah, it's the battery's about dead. Grab another battery. Bear with me a second. But uh, really. You've got to be shitting me. This one's dead, too. Oh, ha, ha, ha. Eh, there's enough left in this one if I break them loose with the... Nope. Oh. Well, let me grab the electrician screwdriver. Nothing like the uh, old electrician screwdriver. Almost as fast. I'm just wondering if this is just a, maybe there's a filter capacitor in here, but it's just a, basically a switch box, or power distribution box. It's kind of what it's looking like. They didn't use these when I was in, <laughs> it was a long time ago, it's been over 20 years ago, but, uh, yeah, anyhow, the old Singar systems, man, when they first came out, because all of the radios, the time has to be synced from radio to radio, so, you know, me being the net control, because I was the company's radio operator, everyone else's radio, their time base, needed to be in sync with mine. And if anybody's radio drifted off time, they could no longer talk on the secured frequency hopping system anymore. And then they'd have to call you on the non the non-frequency hopping channel ask for you, and I don't even, it's been so long ago, I don't even remember what the heck they called that. You had to, uh, what that procedure was called, but you had to re, re basically resync their radios um, so they could be, they could then operate in the system again. Yeah, I'm, I'm pulling, I'm trying to get this cover off. Ugh, gasket. Yeah, everything's waterproof in the military. It's a nice silicon rubber gasket there. Huh. So that's what it is. It's just a distribution box with a really nice heavy-duty EMI filter. 100 amp and 80 volt EMI filter. That's the only thing I don't know about. Is that a SCR? Hmm. Or is that a gigantic reverse protection diode? Actually, yeah, that's just a diode. Not an SCR. Hmm. It's attached to negative. That's attached to positive. Yes, that's what that is, because there's the positive. So the positives are attached to the negative terminal of the diode. So, yeah, that is a... <laughs> now, that, that's a reverse protection diode there. That thing's bigger. It's the size of my thumb. But, no, oh, that's great. I can use that as is. It doesn't... So it doesn't have to be 24 volt coming in this. You could put in, you know, in my case and the kind of radios I work on, 13.8. Yeah, you just put 13.8 volts in here, and then you'd have what one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight switches and a main. So yeah, that's what they actually have here. So the power comes in, goes up to that main 90 amp breaker, comes out, goes to the EMI filter, then comes out of the EMI filter, and it's branched off to the, what did I just say, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, to the 8 circuit breakers, so there's 30, 30, 20, 20, 10, 10, 5, 5. So, yeah, that's great. 
I can uh, actually use that. Hell, actually, I can use that here at the bench. <laughs> um, what I should do is... Yeah, actually, I've got two Astron power supplies uh, that run in parallel. There they have the uh, the little blue jumper wire that runs between them so they can share the load. That's one thing a lot of people don't realize. when You, you can't just connect two power supplies willy-nilly in parallel. If you do that and, and they don't operate exactly the same, you can end up nuking the one power supply. And it'll be the power supply that can supply more current because it'll, it'll draw all of the load. Um, so that's why the Astron power supplies that are meant to be run in parallel, they have a little wire that jumpers between them. Same thing with laboratory power supplies. You'll see them. They'll usually have a jumper wire if you're going to connect two external power supplies together. It's a parallel for parallel... I'll get it out. Parallel or series operation. That way the, each of the power supplies can sense and they can share the load. But yeah, so I've got two, two Astrons that I run together for 100 amps, so actually that'd be perfect for this thing, so I could just run 100 amps at 13.8 uh, volts into this thing, and adds a nice EMI filter, so that's that's fantastic, I'm actually going to have to look look this, made in Mexico, but I'll have to look that up, Corecom, um, actually get some specs on this and see what uh, that is, but yeah, that's nice, that's definite ad advantage, you know, you're working with radios, man, you can never have too much filtering on your power supply, so, hey, MPD Digital, thanks a lot um like i say one man's junk is another man's treasure and man you just made my day even if you didn't send any of the cables or that other stuff uh i would have been tickled pink with just this um this this is killer man this is fantastic like <laughs> man that's thank you big thumbs up to mpd digital now now that got me feeling bad i'm gonna have to go buy a bunch of coax cables from them to make up for it <laughs> So there you go. There was, there's what came uh, free uh, freebie I got today.